uh, Professor Walter, uh, as you have a, uh, you you studied in and uh, you work in Germany and America and just now in a in a Norway. So uh, each country and each university has its own specialty of courses and curriculum and all these things. How you benefited due to this internationalization of your in a three country experience uh, regarding the enriching the curriculum and due to having this type of experience? Mm. Uh, well, my experience of uh, uh, of having this uh, variety of uh, academic uh, backgrounds and uh, respective uh, academic communities and uh, respective. Uh, schools of thought which yeah. are slightly different not totally different but but they are different in germany yeah, and yeah. the united states and also in norway i i principally always am of the opinion that uh, more perspectives are better than fewer or just one perspective because you simply see uh, more things if you look at things from different angles yeah, yeah. and i try to convey this uh, in my personal teaching as well uh -huh. I make it explicit uh, for the student that uh, things can look different from an American angle uh, or from a German angle. And students are usually quite receptive to that. They also like a personal approach where you supply personal anecdotes and uh, stories that illustrate the uh, general points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Professor Aspen, as you also visited so many uh, universities, uh, and when uh, you design a uh, your course in your university, mm -hmm. really when you visit to different uh, universities uh, under a internationalization of higher education, and you come across the different curricula uh, of your own own course, mm -hmm. and there may be a different uh, theoretical part or little bit uh, different practices and practical aspect and to him mm -hmm. uh, of that uh, course. Uh, really, how it helped to you to enrich your or design the new curricula or design the new course? I think it has been uh, really important to visit different universities to learn more about uh, what is happening actually in research and in teaching and in the curriculums around. For instance, uh, uh, in a collaboration with uh, you and uh, SPDU, yeah, 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 yeah. we, we foc after that we focused more on uh, multiculturalism, for instance, oh, yes, in the true, courses. True. And after I went to uh, work with a university in uh, in the close to Seattle in America, critical yeah. multiculturalism was added to it. Yeah. And then uh, in Sweden, uh, in Malmö, then it was added like a very investigative uh, way of learning, like challenge-based learning it's called. Okay. So you yeah, reach yeah, out yeah. and go to places and work on real uh, uh, problems which exist in the society and kind of mixing together, taking in perspectives has made my uh, uh, teaching better. Oh, good, good, good. Also, the in the internationalization of higher education, the more and most important area and aspect is the research. Yeah. Just now you also said that the research is taking place and we exchange the ideas while the research and we have a project which will really solve the global problems like a sustainable development education is one of the aspect and, and every country having a democratic values and how democratic practices are there in each country or each university is followed. And regarding that, there are so many areas in a in a uh, scientific research. There are other in a in a physical research, computational research, in a biological research, life uh, science research, social science, education, legal education. Every country has its own problem, and through the higher education, they do the research and all these things. And uh, due to that, the they emerge. But the through the only the. Uh, research article, we know that the, in which country, which type of research is going on. But when actually we have a, a inter, in the, under the uh, internationalization, we visit the place and directly interact with the research scholars, also the faculties, and that enriches our own experiences. Uh, that may be in a research methodology, 
that may be in selecting the area, that may be analyzing it, applying it, and then go ahead in all these things, isn't it? So, uh, what type of actual concrete research projects uh, uh, you are handling under the uh, internationalization of higher education? Uh, we have a collaboration uh, with the Pune when it comes to, we are looking into three cross-cutting themes in teacher education actually. Yeah. Sustainable development, citizenship or democratic citizenship even, and life skills. Yeah. And uh, to, to develop that uh, uh, further, you know, the research in this area, comparative research um, might add to it, you know, to, yeah. Yeah, and that uh, researchers from different traditions meet to discuss, to develop projects together, um, gives more perspectives to the whole uh, collaboration, the research collaboration, yeah. brings in more perspective, True. perspectives. And Professor Walter, just here, uh, uh, Professor Esmond had uh, narrated three areas in that uh, sense. You had interacted now to a Indian student of Isayutri Bhai Phule Pune University. And before that, you interacted with the Norwegian students. And uh, I think in an informal discussion and uh, at the time of you said that the approach of thinking towards the sustainable education or a democratic uh, education, uh, edu education for democracy and all or the life skills, the Norwegian students are thinking different and Indian students are totally different. What your opinion regarding this? Uh, it was extremely interesting for me to uh, watch uh, the discussions and uh, the dialogues actually that happened with respect to these uh, three topics and areas of interest. Uh, and uh, I'm just uh, principally convinced that uh, having different points of departure and viewing things uh, slightly but not totally different. I mean, there were a lot of areas where I could recognize uh, yeah. the same concerns and the yeah. same views that you yeah. would meet other places in the world, including Norway. But this combination of uh, similarities on the one hand and differences in some areas on the other hand is extremely instructive, interesting uh, and inspiring, last but not least. Uh, I that think that uh, with respect to both research uh, and uh, teaching, uh, the best results come as a result of uh, teamwork. And in a team, it is not necessary that all have the same qualifications and the same perspectives and the same views. It's yeah. like playing football. If you have 11 players yeah. who are good at uh, uh, keeping the ball or shooting goals, or uh, you have to have 11 different players. True. To, 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 to do, a good do, do you think that the internationalization of higher education, the research aspect, the quality of research enriched to this? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm convinced uh, that this is. Uh, we also experience that now we in India, uh, the methodology you follow it, and uh, uh, even though the same methodology, but the procedure uh, you follow it, we learn from you. And we are using it for you, our um, phenological studies and uh, other studies and like that qualitative research, how to improve the uh, conducting the research by procedural way to improve the internal validity of a research data collection, how you do it uh, very differently, which we can, we can have a, that best practice in our research and mm. enriching our research that always happen. Exactly. That means along with the creation of knowledge, along with the no application of knowledge, the research process also improved due to the exchange of views. Isn't it? Are you both agree with me? Yeah, yes. Yes. Now, this, we know that this uh, internationalization of higher education benefit for exchange of curriculum, exchange of student, exchange of faculty, uh, then uh, collaborative research and connecting to each other and all these things. So, how your university is facilitating the internationalization? Are you having any, any special section, department, center and how that center is supporting to a student and faculty uh, to encourage internationalization? 
Uh, we have an international uh, section at the, um, or department at the oh. University of Southeastern Norway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which, uh, and also at every campus, because there are several campuses at the uh, university, and uh, there there is always one uh, responsible for uh, international relations. And they, um, they are supporting uh, us writing applications, for instance, for funding. Okay. That is one point. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's, uh, they're also supporting uh, incoming and outgoing students, like students coming to uh, Nordtoden, for instance, the campus we work at. Their, um, the international students are secured uh, a place to live, they get information about their, their the, insurance, their uh, health, yeah. uh, their uh, their staying arrangement, exactly. uh, their visa, and all these things. That yeah. means this center is facilitating to both fac staff and uh, uh, yeah. uh, faculty and, and and students regarding all aspect of their mobility. Absolutely, right from application to then credit exchange because the student will come to the different university and they will spend one semester there which subject they learn where we you have to credit it to his own uh, home uh, university registered degree that also that all the facility is taken facilitation is taken by the uh, international center uh, it's fine so uh, Yes, you uh, on want a to more say. general level, one might also add that uh, in Norway, uh, due to state financing of education, uh, students are actually encouraged and yeah. get a lot of money yeah, yeah. to go abroad, to yeah, go yeah. other places. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a cost to them, yeah. it's even financially rather a benefit than a cost. And that, of course, makes it more likely that people... Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as you are rightly saying that, the mobility without funding cannot be possible. And then uh, everybody wants to move and to the another university to have a wider experiences in his own subject, teaching, research and, 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 and different areas of higher education. So what are the sources university, your university is um, actually utilizing for the mobility of the student? We have like the noted collaboration which is a four years uh, four year program where we have external funding external funding yeah. which and, they give. Uh, and we have this uh, european program you talked about erasmus yes which is also a possibility but uh, th there are also a few students that go abroad without funding from the university oh. it's because they are they, they get loan for, and uh, scholarship from the the state actually Okay. Which makes it possible. To so th this is something which makes it uh, feasible for a lot of Norwegians to go abroad. That means state has a policy to support financially by loan or scholarships. Yeah, exactly. Isn't it? And there are so many other uh, external uh, funding agencies like Noted, yeah. um, then uh, India, Norway Council, mm. uh, India, Australia Council, and then DAD. Erasmus, as you said, there are so many SASnet program with the Sweden, Sweden uh, in uh, South Asia. Like there, there are so many agencies, but the student and teacher has to explore it, and uh, uh, they have to apply within their time slot uh, for the uh, application. Mm. Uh, and when if the application is uh, really um, impressive, and conditions are the fulfilling the funding is getting it and we are beneficiary of this mm -hmm. and due to that noted funding you are here and enjoying the internationalization of higher education isn't it so um, at the end we can say that the curriculum and the policy curriculum exchange and mobility of a staff and student the, the each university and the state needs to be have a very uh, uh, we can say encouraging policy for that 
the 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 research projects uh, to be sound research project so that external funding agency will support that uh, and through that mobility or uh, uh, internationalization is taking place so friends uh, you i hope that due to our uh, discussion in what areas the internationalization in higher education is taking place how the funding is taking place, what are the challenges, how they facilitated each university as the Savitri Bhai Pule Pune University is also having a international student center. That center is supporting wholly uh, uh, to the all the home students, the, their own students and also the incoming student from a other universities uh, to ease their uh, mobilization and faculty very easily so that they will be not a, a any problem no hardness there it will be a smooth mobility among them and they will be benefited to, through this by and and it is not only a one time somebody is coming and that collaboration that connection enhances you know big projects and new funding agency they collaboratively apply for it and this type of exchange is always going on and the the globe higher education is benefited through this to creation of knowledge to creation of by using this knowledge created knowledge to create a wealth and how this the problems of the globe is established economy is boosted through this and, and the social justice or social equality is established uh, through this higher education. One of the major aspect we see is the 21st century's higher education, one of the, the important and vital uh, part of the higher education. I think our teachers uh, well versed now the um, internationalization of higher education. I thank to both our friends from Norway uh, exchanging their views about the internationalization of higher education. Thank you and Dhanyavad.